Hello ladies and gentlemen, just a clarification on my video post earlier about the coronavirus patent. Um, I don't believe that good mental health is hiding under the bed with a pillow over your head shouting la 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 la. I think being mentally healthy, being an adult, means facing challenges head on, getting all of the facts, studying the threat so that you can formulate a proper strategy and a response to the challenge. It turns out that scientists have been developing different modified versions of the coronavirus since the early 2000s. Why is this not part of the public discourse? That was my first point that I wanted to make is this should be part of the public discourse. The second point is we have scientists out there from all over the world, from many different backgrounds and nationalities who've been pulling the coronavirus apart and other viruses apart and putting them back together like Lego for years. Why are they not front and center in the public eye in mainstream media telling us exactly what this is and exactly how it's likely to spread and what our best way of dealing with it is? I'm also a little bit confused, I know everybody is, by the numbers being given. Obviously this is not my field of expertise. We're being told a vaccine, uh, realistically, won't be available for around 18 months. Why would it be available in 18 months if, they've been tr if this patent that I cited, it's just one, there's multiple patents, look it up for yourself. That was there to develop a vaccine for avian bird flu because for economic reasons, because you put in the, uh, the, the birds in the sheds and then a certain number of them were dying and a certain number of them weren't doing what the agricultural business wanted them to do. So if there was no vaccine created then, why would there magically be a vaccine created now? What am I, why am I saying those words out loud? Am I trying to frighten people? No, I'm trying to catch up with what this is. I'm reading the research on it. I'm listening to what the medical professionals are saying, not the journalists. And it's been made very clear. There are two responses to this. One depends on a vaccine. And if we're going for the vaccine route, we respond in this way. If we're not gonna get a vaccine, we take a completely different strategic route for dealing with the pandemic. So, I would think, even if it's frightening, even if it's unpleasant, people are better off knowing, for example, you're better off knowing um, there won't be a vaccine inside of a relevant time frame for this to work. So when we say to you, please self-isolate, don't think it's a joke. Don't think we're taking the piss. It's the only thing that's actually gonna reduce the spread and make it manageable until such time as we can formulate some kind of a vaccine or, or maybe, you know, some maybe more effective antivirals. So you don't get vaccinated for it, but if you do get it, much like getting HIV nowadays, the, the drugs that they give you mean that if it's early enough, you will live um, a full life or whatever it is. But I resent being attacked for it. I resent the personal attacks that I've had today and the emails that I've had today saying that I'm scaremongering. I'm only reporting the facts. This is in the public eye. It is a patent. What this means is that people have been working on it. So my two points again, and please, at the back of the room, clean your fucking ears out. This should be part of the public discourse because if it's not part of the public discourse, who will make it, who, who ends up owning it? Fringe groups, people who are not a great reliable source of information are gonna end up owning it and they'll twist it, they'll change it. Secondly, I would like the scientists who are most qualified to, uh, uh, to discuss this to be available. And so I, I wanna see them on TV. When Sky News, BBC News, CNN, Fox News comes on, there are people out there who've been working with the coronavirus for over a decade. Let's hear from them. That makes sense to me. It's not scaremongering, it's I want to know. I'm facing an enemy. I want to know their intent, their size, their resources, their weaknesses. I want to know everything and so should you. Good mental health and having a positive 
mental attitude is not the same thing as sliding into denial. Let's be strong, let's be adult, and let's look at the facts as they present themselves so we can act accordingly. Because at this moment in time, there are many people who aren't taking government advice seriously because it doesn't add up. People are not stupid. They know we're not being told the whole story. And so they, they take pieces of information and then they come to odd conclusions or they come to their own conclusions. As with other incidences in, in the recent past, it behooves the British government to make it very, very crystal clear to a person of a average or even perhaps slightly below average intelligence what the threat is and what the response is. I am a life coach by trade, but I do an awful lot of video editing. You can hire video editors online who will give you nice little comic book cartoon characters explaining to you everything that happens with doot de doot music in the background so that nobody panics. Just one clear message. Just let people know. Yes, these, this virus, it has not this, not COVID-19, but different strains of this virus have been moved around, played with for the purpose of, of vaccination, of developing vaccines and other, you know, valid scientific medical purposes over the years. And these are the people who do it. The names are out there in the public domain. And this is what they've told us that COVID-19 is specifically what the threat is and what we should do about it. How hard is it? Just communicate clearly with people. It's, it's really, really straightforward. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not saying this is a, um, a deliberately designed virus or strain of the virus that somebody released. But perhaps it is. And if that's the case, I would like to know. I would like to know. I'd like to know what it is that we're facing. If it's been tampered with in a way that dampens people's immune system deliberately when they are infected, I would like to know because that would mean that part of our response, if we're talking threat, response, threat, analysis, threat analysis, strategy development, response in action, I would like to know that. Is that the reason why when people take ibuprofen, some people, and uh, noticeably in the UK two days ago, a four-year-old girl, their symptoms got noticeably worse because this particular strain of the coronavirus attacks the immune system when you are infected as well, and ibuprofen dampens the immune system slightly. By the way, that's a piece of advice um, from one of the uh, chief doctors from the Liverpool Tropical School of Medicine. It's probably better if you do become symptomatic to stick to paracetamol and to avoid ibuprofen. You see, there's a little tactic right there. Because we assessed the threat properly, because we gathered some realistic data and information, who's, who, has anybody told you that? Has anybody actually said from the government, here's a government advisory video. If you get the symptoms, generally speaking, the doctors seem to be agreeing paracetamol is better than ibuprofen because ibuprofen could potentially dampen your immune system. Would you like to know that? I would. I'd like the data, please. I would like to be told what is going on, unedited. Mistakes happen, who knows? Maybe this was deliberately developed and it was developed for good reasons with good intent and some naughty person got hold of it and released it. Maybe it really did come from a wet market in Wuhan. Maybe it is genuinely just, uh, just incidental. Okay, whatever it is, let's explore the possibilities. Let's discuss it. It doesn't, every, everything doesn't have to fall back into, I'm red team, you're blue, blue team, fuck you. This is what I believe, that's what you believe, fuck you. That's not an adult response, ladies and gents, that's an infantile response. And now, ironically enough, we've moved into a situation where we can say these infantile responses are actually now on a situation of literal life and death. And it's not good enough. It is not good enough anymore. We either grow up and meet the challenge properly as adults or whatever happens, happens. Don't suck your thumb and hide under the bed. Having a positive mental attitude does not mean retreating back into an infantile mental state of denial. I would like to know 
all of the data of what's going on because my health, my life, my livelihood, your health, your life, your livelihood, and of everybody you know, because it's a global pandemic, will be affected by it. We would like to know the truth. May the children, the infants, the rigidly afflicted, the people who just seem to not be able to think or not want to think, perhaps it causes them physical pain, I don't know, please move to one side and let the adults talk. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and for your attention, and I will look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Cheers.